Here's another look at the EM plane wave amplitude. And we covered this. We know we already have the amplitude. It's in terms of E naught, and that's equal to C times B naught. But that's not really as useful. When, when you buy a light bulb, you don't go buy a 10 volt per meter light bulb. You know, you don't want your amplitudes in terms of fields. Uh, you want power and energy. So we need to think about how much energy flows in an electromagnetic plane wave. So let's draw our plane wave again real quick. We've drawn it a bunch. So in this plane, we have the E field going up and the B field going that way. And E cross B tells us that K is this way. So this plane is propagating um, in that direction. X, Y, Z. So there's our plane. We want to characterize the energy flow with a new vector, S is the pointing vector. And it describes energy flow. And I didn't misspell it, by the way. It's called the pointing vector, but it's P-O-Y-N-T-I-N-G because it's named after John Henry Pointing, who developed the concept. So it does point in this direction with the k vector to describe the energy flow, but it's not P-O-I-N-T-I-N-G, it's P-O-Y-N-T-I-N-G. I'm sure he had a sense of humor about it. Um, so we use it to describe energy flow, and I see before we do that, we have a question here. All right. Do, Doobie Keebler. So Doobie Keebler asks, why not just use k already points in the right direction. Okay, yeah. So, okay, so Mr. Keebler is asking if we already have one vector here, the k vector, why do we need another one here? And yeah, so the directions are the same, but the amplitudes tell you different things. The k vector tells you basically the frequency, right? K is two pi over the wavelength for light. If you know the wavelength, you know the frequency, there's non, no dispersion and everything. Omega equals CK. So this one tells you the frequency, but this one is going to tell us something new. It's going to tell us the, about the amplitude. It's going to turn our electric and magnetic field amplitudes into energy. So uh, what John Henry Pointing pointed out is that you want to define it as S is epsilon naught C squared uh, times E cross B. Right? So you can see, we know it goes along the k vector because it's e cross b. And we know from the right-hand rule, e cross b always uh, points along k. The magnitude then, so, so let's go ahead and write, so we know the direction is always going to be forward. Let's go ahead and write the magnitude of s. Right? So the magnitude would be just e naught, or epsilon naught, c squared. And the cross product of e and b would be the magnitude of E times the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle between them. Well, they're always 90 degrees between them. They're always perpendicular, so that sign is always one. So it's really just a matter of writing the magnitudes of the two waves. Well, if we just think of them as sinusoids for a moment, that would be E naught cosine uh, KZ minus omega T and B naught. So we end up with a cosine squared term, right? So it, it oscillates a little bit different, and uh, we'll just write omega t. Don't worry about the spatial part. Let's just think in one plane at the origin, how does this thing fluctuate? And it fluctuates like that. So actually what you see is that when E and B are this way, the pointing vector is that way. And then when it fluctuates and E and B are the opposite way, the pointing vector is still that way. So it actually sits here and fluctuates really fast, right? With the, at, the, about the, at twice the frequency of, of the light, because it goes positive to zero, positive to zero, positive to zero, positive to zero. That's another difference is the k vector is just a constant. The k vector just points in the direction all the time. S fluctuates because S is describing uh, the energy um, in the wave. Okay, so oscillates rapidly. Okay. 
And this does come from arguments. You can think about the energy density in a field, and you can think about the plane wave moving through a cube and do a few minor calculations. I really just wanted to get to the answer so I can show you what we're really working towards. So since this is so fast, we really just care about the time average. Okay? So the time average of the magnitude of the pointing vector would be written like this. Right, so the straight bars are the magnitude because uh, uh, or the magnitude because we don't want to think about a cross product and the brackets mean time average. And let's see, if you time average cosine squared, you get a half. Right, so go do the integral, you get a half, which will make the cosine squared term go away. So you get one half epsilon naught c squared e naught times b naught. So that is a convenient way to describe the amplitude because that is what we call the irradiance. In, and it's in watts per meter squared, which is exactly the unit you would want to use. Okay? So let's keep in mind what we've done here. You can describe an electromagnetic plane wave's amplitude in terms of E and B naught, but what Pointing pointed out is here's a combination of the E field and the B field that's useful because when you take the time average of the magnitude of this combination to make this vector, it gives you the power per unit area. Right? How much energy is flowing by in this plane wave per unit area, the irradiance. You gotta do irradiance for a plane wave. You can't just do power, because the power in a plane wave is infinite, because it has infinite area. Right? So we always care about, care about the power per unit area for a plane wave. <laughs>